Hey guys, welcome back to another What's For Dinner video. I've got some really great, tasty, and easy recipes to share with you, so let's get started. All right guys, so for tonight's dinner, we're going to keep it sim super simple with a sheet pan meal. I'm gonna chop up some potatoes, we're gonna do some kielbasa, and some frozen green beans. I'm gonna probably not put them all in at the same time. Um, I'm gonna drizzle with some olive oil, well, maybe Italian dressing, not sure and some seasoning and we're just gonna go for it and I think it's gonna be good and that's about all I have the energy for today. All right guys, so I am just taking some potatoes and dicing them up into chunks and cutting away any yuckier spots. I decided not to peel the potatoes. I find that if you do peel the potatoes, a lot of times you realize that those yucky spots are just surface level and they don't actually need to be cut out. But when you don't peel them, sometimes it's kind of hard to tell, so I just kind of went in there and took some out. And I'm just tossing them in a bowl with some Italian dressing. I decided to do that instead of just oil, just to give it a little bit more flavor. This night, I was really just looking for something very quick and easy to put together. I did not, I don't remember what was going on, but I was not in the mood to do much in the kitchen. And then I have this seasoned salt, it's called Herbamere. It's a, an infused salt, I think is what it says. Um, but you could use regular salt or you could use a regular seasoned salt. And then I wanted to add on a little bit of rosemary and I'm just tossing to coat the potatoes really well. And then we're going to put these on a lined baking sheet that has also been sprayed. All right, I'm gonna put this in the oven at 400 degrees. I want them in the oven all together for about 30 or 35 minutes. I'm gonna pull them out in a few minutes and add the kielbasa, and then a few minutes later, I will add the green beans. The green beans are probably for the last like t uh, 15 minutes. All right, so I'm using kielbasa. You could use any kielbasa, sausage, really whatever your family likes. Um, I've used chicken sausage. I love sheet band meals because you can just kind of do whatever you want. Just pick things that go well together with seasonings that would work similarly on everything and you can do whatever ratios and amounts you want based on your taste and the size of your family. I'm using two packages of kielbasa even though it's just the two of us because I definitely wanted leftovers and I also wanted it to be a little bit heavier on the meat. So once um, the potatoes were in for a few minutes, I pulled them out. I realized I needed a little bit more oil. The Italian dressing wasn't enough, so I added some avocado oil and I'm tossing around these sausages. The sausage is already cooked, so it's really just to heat through and I do like them to get a little bit crispy. But, um, and I could have put this all in at the same time, the kielbasa and the potatoes, but I wanted to just get a head start because I think I needed to get dinner going. So. Now I took some frozen green beans. You could use fresh, I do not have any. I do prefer frozen over canned. And I once again added some oil. I think I used avocado oil and some more of that Herbamere seasoned salt and tossed this in. I knew the green beans were only gonna take probably about 15 minutes. And as you see, I decided to go for a little bit more green beans. We do like to have a lot of veggies in our dinner and popped that back in until everything was done. And this is how it came out. This was delicious. It's super simple. Um, it just takes like no brain power <laughs> for me when it comes to making these kinds of things for dinner. So this was a win, very easy and very delicious. All right, so on this night, um, we were doing a switch up from regular tacos. I had seen on Moss Family TV's channel, they did crispy Southwest wraps. I don't know if I'm actually following exactly what they did, um, but this is where I got, that's where I got the idea from. And I don't know how these taste so much better than just regular tacos, but these were really good. So we just took tortillas, we put some cheese, some rice, some taco meat, and I was using some corn. My husband used black beans. And we did struggle a little bit with these tortillas, to be honest. I don't think they were the freshest. They weren't like bad or anything, but they just weren't as pliable. I did try heating them up in the microwave with like a warm or a wet paper towel to soften them up. We still struggled a little bit, but it's okay. We made them work and they actually didn't like burst or out the seams or anything but um, it just took a little bit of maneuvering and then we just fried these in the pan I think I used some avocado oil and just got them nice and crispy on both sides and then um, my husband's was served up with a side of lettuce and tomato and sour cream and I just did lettuce and sour cream and I love this chili lime seasoning from Trader Joe's and put some of that on and that was what was for dinner. This was absolutely delicious. And my husband also made a little bit of um, guac on the side 
just a, I don't know, I think it was a very basic, simple guacamole, but we had some avocado that needed to be used. All right, guys, so we're gonna do another recipe that was similar to one I did, I think in my last What's For Dinner, I did a stuffed spaghetti squash, and this is very similar, but when I saw this, I thought we need to do this again and just um, add in a couple more steps. And it was very good, just like the last one, but you know, definitely had some added oomph to it. So I browned up some ground beef, and then I did take out some of it because I just didn't need it all for this recipe. Um, so obviously that's gonna vary based on how many people you're feeding. And I added in some spaghetti sauce and then some Italian seasoning. I like to doctor up my sauce a little bit. I miss making my own sauce, but I haven't had a garden in a couple years. Um, and so I'm also just adding in some salt. And obviously I could make my own sauce without having my garden, but that's when I used to do it because we had tons and tons of tomatoes. So anyways, now I'm gonna add in a little bit of garlic powder as well. And again, you're just gonna do whatever seasonings that you want, however you want to, you know, spice yours up. And we're just combining that really well. In the meantime, I had a spaghetti squash roasting in the oven. And um, you just cut it in half, scoop up the seeds, flip it over, bake it, usually at 400 degrees for anywhere between 20, 25 minutes and 45 minutes. It's going to vary on, based on the size of your spaghetti squash. And I am just fluffing out the spaghetti squash. We are going to mix in one container of ricotta cheese and then some mozzarella and Parmesan cheese. I will have the original recipe linked below. Um, I didn't fully follow the instructions per usual, but also just wanted to use whatever I had on hand. And then I'm gonna add in a little bit of dried parsley. Fresh parsley would be great, but I never have fresh herbs on hand. And now I'm adding in some butter and garlic um, and just mixing that all down into the spaghetti squash. This is not a part of the recipe, but it's part of what I did when I made the stuffed spaghetti squash. So I just wanted to do that to make sure there was some good flavor there. Now I'm just adding in some meat sauce. We're gonna put on top the ricotta cheese mixture and then add on the rest of the meat sauce and top with some more shredded cheese. So then we'll pop this back in the oven, get it nice and heated through and the cheese melted on top. You could also take this, the spaghetti squash out of the shell, I guess you call it, I don't know, and just put this all in a casserole dish together. Um, this was really, really good. Like I said, very similar to our stuffed spaghetti squash. This time basically the ricotta cheese mixture was added, but this was so, so good. We had leftover of the mixture and actually just made it with spaghetti on another night because we had a lot of that stuff left over, but this was amazing. All right guys, so I have a super busy day today, so we are doing a pot roast because so I can set it and forget it. So I have got a chuck roast and I have no idea how big it is weight wise because we order our meat, we or we purchased a half of a cow. And uh, so they are packaged, but they, I don't have weights on everything. So I'm just gonna salt this really good. I'm also gonna add some ranch seasoning. Um, this is, I'm just gonna put what I have left. I make my own. This is probably uh, a little more than a tablespoon. I'm gonna add a little bit of Worcestershire sauce. Maybe a couple tablespoons. I'm gonna stick a bay leaf in here. I chopped up an onion and just put it in chunks. Sorry, I feel like the lighting is not great. And then I just did, I don't know, three or four potatoes and uh, I don't know, I did a bunch of carrots. Just kind of, it didn't cut off really small, but I'm um, just gonna throw those all in here. Also gonna add just a little bit of onion powder. There's onion powder in the ranch seasoning, but, and a little bit of garlic powder. Whoops. I almost opened it on the big end. Now, I don't think I need to add any liquid because 
think there's going to be enough from everything, but I'll check on it later, and if I need to add in some beef broth, I will, and I'm going to put it on low. It's 11.30 in the morning right now. I'm planning on leaving this here all day. We'll probably eat around 6.30 or 7, but I'll check it and see if I need to add some liquid in just a little while, and well, in like a couple hours. All right, so I didn't end up adding any liquid. Um, you could have if you wanted maybe to make more gravy, which is what I'm about to do here. But as you can see, there's plenty of liquid in there. Um, so I'm just pulling out some of that liquid and we're going to just um, put that on the stove top and whisk in some flour just to thicken that up and get us some gravy and then dinner will be ready to be served. Here it is all plated up. This pot roast was delicious and so were the leftovers. All right guys, well that's gonna be it for today's video. If you liked it, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe by hitting the red subscribe button below and hit the notification bell next to it so you'll be sure to be notified when my other videos come out. And we'll see you next time.